for it. Oh, dude, I went to bed at like 4.30 last night. <laughs> that is not healthy. <laughs> I'm, I'm messing up. I go to bed late all the time. Really? Like what time? Yeah. I mean, average is between 12 and 2. If I'm really working hard and have something to do that I need to get done, it's, it can be that time. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, too, I feel like everyone is just staying up later these days. I know because there's not enough time in the day to... Is that what it is? That's exactly... To me. For me. For me too. Because <laughs> I'm like, I, I'd rather sacrifice sleep and get it done than... Yeah, then just go to sleep and have to wake up and deal with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I'd rather be. Yeah, it's always like it's better to get it done now, but I'm just like, God, I wish everyone else was up late with me. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, guys, exactly. welcome back to That's the Angle. This time I am joined with, uh, I'm joined by oh, Joy yeah. Kingsley. Yes. And, um, and correct me if I get this wrong. Most Joy is do. the founder <laughs> and the creator, maybe, of uh, Kingsley Model and Talent Agency. Management. Model and talent management. Yep, but you almost got it. <laughs> okay, so it's not just a straight modeling um, agency. No, because we represent um, photographers, makeup artists, hairstylists. And um, and so I've always wanted to keep it open mm-hmm. for opportunities that may arise. So it's not just one single thing. And we also represent fashion and commercial talent. Oh, wow. So you guys just do a lot. We do. <laughs> I mean, you're covering all the bases. I mean, it's so easy to speak modeling, but no, it's like that's a whole... Yeah. It's like if you need a good looking person, hit you up. Exactly. <laughs> right. I know. And the reason being is that a lot of times, you know, and, and in this area, we deal with a lot of small businesses, entrepreneurs that they know that they want to represent their, their brand or market their brand, but they, all they know is that they need a model. Mm. So they don't realize also that, you know, when you're trying to do a photo shoot or a video commercial shoot, it's important to have someone you work with that knows what they're doing. And so by me providing reputable photographers or makeup artists or hairstylists, it's just a one-stop shop for them to be able to trust. Is it hard to convince people that they need a good looking person to, to like <laughs> get their face microdermed abrasion in their, in their video? Um, <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Like how do, like, what is that like? You're like, you're like, look, I, I know you want to just use your friend because they're your friend, mm-hmm. but you really want to use our guys. Like they know how to sit there perfectly. Yeah. And their nose and looks great on camera. But sometimes you have to let them fail to oh, realize that. Oh, for them you to know? be like. So I've always been in the position where I'm never going to push you my way. You like, you see the value or you don't. Mm-hmm. And so when they do try to go the other way because they're like, oh, we need to save money. I'm like, all right. And then a year later, they're coming back and they said, you know what? We should have listened. I get that all the time. That, so that must be the best thing. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, but I try not to. <laughs> uh, it's it's like that happens to me sometimes when smaller businesses I shoot for, they'll want to use like their friends or their sisters. I'm like, oh my god. Like, yeah, you feel like, bad for them. It hurts my soul because I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I, they're beautiful people, yeah. but they are just not models. Exactly. And it's it's, a, it's like this weird thing where it's like slightly shallow, but it's just true. It is true, and also people don't understand that. Sometimes it's not just about being beautiful True. to model, you know, and a lot of times the beauty, the camera just captures it. And so you'll see some people who the average person may not think, oh, they're a great model. But you and I know when you're behind the camera, you see the angles, you see everything happening, and then you just create this beautiful thing, you, you know? know? I, yeah, it's like, it's like a lot of the girls you see on like high fashion runway. Yeah. If you saw them like no makeup on walking down the street, you'd be like, they're just mm. yeah, you'd everyday like, girls. You like swipe left on them a bumble or, or <laughs> right. Tinder or whatever you use, but they transform. Once, but they just transform to like butterflies yeah. and all of a sudden they're like confident. They're killing it. Yeah. Like they fit perfectly. They have like this and perfectly so weird look. To watch. <laughs> it's so crazy. It is. <laughs> so but I love that part of it. Yeah. So I mean like a, a big, a, a big reason why I was like so stoked to have you on the show is because uh-huh. DC is such a small town in that regard. Yeah. Like I don't know of many other people that do what you do. If, I mean, I know of you guys mm-hmm. and then I know of T H E mm-hmm. and then some other small people that just won't be named like Lord, right. like Lord Voldemort. We just won't name <laughs> exactly. them because we're just not going to mention them or, or, or just talk on it. But, <laughs> right. but why, but it, it's just, but it's, it's, it's cool. And it's also weird that there's so few of you. Yeah. And DC is like, in, unlike any other city that has a big fashion scene where there's so many of them. When mm-hmm. you think about New York, when you think about, you know, Boston, California, Flor- Florida, Miami, um, there are so many agencies there yeah. and there's that competition. And, you know, I grew up as an athlete, so I've always been competitive. And I think competition is healthy 
because it allows you to step your game up. If you're yeah. not doing better for yourself or doing better for the people that you represent, then why are you even in it? You know what I mean? So I take that as um, it's time. And it's time to give visibility to people that are sometimes overlooked because also there are times where um, businesses will only see one type of person to market their product. And so I try to create a, hey, well, here's this girl that may be of, of mixed race or here's this talent that may not be the aesthetically perfect model, mm -hmm. but they still bring value. Are you talking in like a DC sense? Um, yeah, a DC sense, but I think it's also bigger than that, mm -hmm. you know? Because I feel like the DC sense is very, uh, and it's something I've dealt with too. It's, mm -hmm. it's where it's very um, African-American. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, it's like, it's like, oh no, but if you want to reach a lot of other people, let's just bring in like one Asian guy. Right. One, one mixed girl, <laughs> right. one white girl, like let's, yeah. let's break the bubble a little bit. You almost <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's a bigger world guys. Yes, I know. And, 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 and just so you guys know, Joy looks like and, and tall enough to be a model. So you said you're an athlete. I'm not surprised. Like she could dunk on me. Like, like, yep. okay, I don't know if you're I that tall, but, but yeah, you look like you're, <laughs> what, what, what did you play? Um, I, well, high school, I played everything, basketball, volleyball, track, um, and College, I got a full scholarship to George Mason for volleyball. Whoa, yep. whoa. So I'm a D1 athlete. And then I also played professionally in the Netherlands. Well, there you that. go. If you had any confusion <laughs> about her height, <laughs> D1 volleyball player will, will solve it all for yes. you. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, def definitely just not enough of you guys. Yeah, there it's, isn't. It's, it's weird because like you do everything almost because it's, we're in a town like where we have to do everything, I'm guessing. Right. And at a place like New York there's just, just tiny boutique agencies. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, how do they, how does that work? They'll have like four models, but they're just amazing models. But I'm yeah. just like, that's all you do? <laughs> I don't know how, mm -hmm. how they do it. And um, I just, you know, I grew up just always trying different things. And, um, and I think that confidence in finding success early on as an athlete and then taking that into everything I do now. So with fashion, I'm always going to put my best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Even when I, you know, so when I was modeling, that was it. I wanted to be the best for me. And um, so I tried different sides of it, you know, from the high fashion to runway to commercial print. And so I achieved a lot of amazing things for me. Mm -hmm. Some things I set out to do, some things I didn't set out to do. And they just, you know, kind of came by way of the hard work. But um, so starting Kingsley was just a product of all of that when I also started my styling business about eight years ago. So it was like, so you went to school, did the whole volleyball route. Did yeah. you model, you modeled after that? Um, yeah, I started modeling at 25. Oh, wow. So late. Yeah, that's super late. <laughs> Very late. Some girls start like 13 oh, and yeah, 14. Oh, yeah, exactly. These days. I started super, super late. And, um, but I had a good career into my 40s, you know. So it's, um, and the thing for me is, if I, I feel like if I wanted to still dabble in that, there's, there's a lane out there for me, but I'm more, I find more joy, no pun intended, in kind of just like guiding the way and helping out the, the new ones coming up, you know? And that's because you've seen, you've been on the inside, I guess, I've been right? on the inside. Oh, I, was, I wasn't too sure. I, I kind of figured you had. Yeah. Like you, you had seen that world. Otherwise, it's like, how else do you start something like exactly. that? Exactly. You know, you have yeah. to know a little bit and, and see that void in the market or yeah. anything like that. And that's exactly what I saw. And more importantly for me was I saw a void in just how talent was, were treated, mm -hmm. you know, being signed by different agencies here in New York. I, and it's, I see how it's easy to kind of fall through the cracks, you know, with your agency, because especially when you're so, when the agency is big, you can't touch base with everyone. You can't give that connection. And, and I get that, you know, but I always try to make it so that my talent feel connected to me. They feel that I'm approachable and they feel that they have a place in this family. What were some know? of the things that would happen to, or that can happen with like a model, like an agency? Like you said, they just kind of be forgotten. Like what? Yeah. Sometimes I, I don't think that, you know, certain I've been on, on different sides where I may have gotten a booking on my own or was booked to do something else. And the client, when I arrived, were like, you weren't submitted in the package. So sometimes I think that you fall you, not forgotten in a bad sense, but just like, hey, they're submitted to other people and then they forgot that you could fit that role too. Mm. Um, or that that communication, keeping that open door of communication, I, I didn't really feel that connected, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so it's not, it's not a knock of other agencies, but it's just something that I noticed and I felt where I just wanted to be different, you know? Yeah, it's and like I you're always just improving on something exactly. that you saw was slightly wrong or slightly yep. off. It's like, that's like any business. Like you improve exactly. on something and then you create that thing. Right. 
create that lane for it, you know? And so, and again, not every talent is worthy of, of different agencies. You know, one agency may not see value in that talent, mm -hmm. another may, you know, and vice versa. So I think it's healthy to, like, as I said earlier, have that um, healthy competition, but also that level of helping each other. You know, there are other agencies here in D.C. that if I'm, I don't think my talent is a good fit particular client, I refer them over. It's very Let nice someone get a piece of the pie. That's you really know nice I mean? of you. Most people would be like, <laughs> so, sorry, yeah. and not try to help everyone. Exactly. That's a common thread that comes up in these podcasts with people who operate out of D.C. And so were you... Born and raised in D.C. or how long have you been here? No, um, I was born in Nigeria. Oh, OK. I'm an immigrant to this country. My family moved from Nigeria to London, to New York, to Maryland, Virginia. And so we've just kind of traveled all over. Um, so I'm a product of all of that. Okay. How long have you been in the area, though? <laughs> the area proper, D.C., four years. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. OK. But I've lived in northern Virginia, Arlington for 10 years. So. And was King, and how old was Kings here? When did you start that? Um, so technically two years ago, incorporating the business, you oh, know, wow. but we didn't really come out to the public mm -hmm. till almost a year. It was a lot longer. That. No, right. <laughs> like, like, I feel like the status yeah. of it just feels a lot bigger than that. It's at least, at least at this point. Yeah. Uh, but no, what I was going to say is I feel like a lot of, uh, people in this area share that same idea of, they think that people in DC don't like to work together. Yeah. Like it's like a very like, I'm taking my piece of the pie yeah. and I'm just going to let it go bad. I'm not going to give right. it to someone else. Right. It's so, it's so interesting that I, it's like a very common thread. Yeah. I think it's just, but there are pockets and I have some pockets of amazing, amazing people in my life, mm -hmm. men and women who share the wealth, who have given me a helping hand, who have given me advice. And so I treasure that and I value that. But there is a, another pocket that is just, hey, keep it to myself and not, you know, let things grow. Cause I feel like when you bring all the, the brains together, you can make something bigger and better and beautiful, but mm -hmm. you know, you just let those ones just stay over there. <laughs> so, so is it you running the, like all the operations every day at it or do you have well, like some people helping or. So like I, I always like to say I'm the janitor and the CEO. Yeah. I mean, I will do you're it in all. any business you're, you, you're putting <laughs> exactly. out fires every day. Yes. People don't think it's no, you're not just like, I own Kingsley. Like you're doing something that people it. don't want to do. It's like, I'm in it. I, we had a photo shoot yesterday and I was steaming, you know, that is, uh, and because of my background at, with wardrobe styling, I'm often there to help with the styling and production, mm -hmm. um, production direction. So, but to me, you got to get it done. You got to get it done. You know, I'll be on my hands and knees with the models, fixing shoes, putting shoes on. But I, so I run, I'm behind the scenes for everything. Mm. There's nothing that happens with agencies that I'm not aware of. Um, I do have an executive assistant, Curtis Barnes. Shout out to Curtis. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I met him. Yeah, before, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. You shot with him, right? Cur Haven't you? Curtis Barnes, Waller. He's, he's a kind of like tall, uh, skinnier guy. He looks yes. like half Asian, half white or something. Yes. I have not correct. shot with him, but he's oh, a great okay. model, by the way. Oh, yeah, really yeah, good. yeah. You should. We'll have to say Yeah, I mean, shout out Curtis. We can maybe there's, there's not many good male models, <laughs> right. in my opinion. And he they're, can they're do rare. so much. He has such range. Yeah. So, you know, he's still on the roster as a model. Mm -hmm. And so when opportunities come that fit what he needs, you know, we definitely submit him. But he expressed interest and wanted to be a part of Kingsley, Kingsley behind the scenes. And so I like to say we both took a chance on each other, but he's amazing. Nice. And we've worked out well together. How many and then, people? Oh, what were you saying? Yeah, and then I have interns. So um, every nice. now and then we'll have anywhere from one or two interns. I'm currently looking for interns right now. Oh, word. Um, yeah. So if you're listening, right. hit it up, slide in the DMs. <laughs> Absolutely. Or email some yes. more professional. I don't know. Yes, emails more professional. You, you don't think DMs are professional? Oh, only just to kind of get an. Hey, do you have an um, uh, email or something I can contact you? Like, don't put the whole thing in an email. I don't know. I feel like there's no I mean, difference. A DM. Yeah. I don't I know. I come from the old school. Like, uh, I come, I am okay, old okay. school. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So I appreciate an email, a professionally well written email. I get what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, if someone's like, hey, you want you to be part of the shoot? I'm like, I don't care how they're communicating yeah. with me. But at the same time, it's like, once it's an email, it becomes more like just it's, cemented, it's a, like, yeah. like they mean it or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. I so can informal. tell a lot of, about a person by how they approach me in correspondence. Yeah. And a lot of people take that for granted. And then you have people that um, you, you're friends with them and they just go straight into their request. There's no, hey, how are you doing? 
and then they want you to. I prefer that sometimes. <laughs> uh, I hate, I hate if all... you're asking for my time. Oh, oh, oh! You're, you're talking like just like time advice. and stuff. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's you different. need That's different. to. <laughs> I was, I was, I was. I think I was thinking about like just all the formalities of email. Like it's such like a formal thing. Like hello, comma space space. <laughs> blah 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 blah. Maybe what do you I'll have think it? rethink that. But Curtis is that way. So we talk, balance each other well. You're talking about something different. Yeah. Though. yeah, yeah. Well, we we balance each other well because he's a millennial. He can deal with all of that stuff, and I let him. That's him. That's a cool perspective to yeah. bring in though you know yeah i'm sure he brings up things that you're just like what exactly no it's it's a it's a constant learning experience you know i learn from him he learns from me and um i'm teaching him the ways of the professionalism <laughs> the emails <laughs> yeah. and he teaches me the ways of the millennials you know and how to talk so uh social media all that that's his cup of tea yeah my favorite mm-hmm. my favorite is the ending of emails i i, I <laughs> never know what to put at the end of an email oh yeah like right now my thing is looking forward <laughs> comma exactly. bruce allen like that's my thing I, I like i actually stole that from someone like i was like <laughs> i don't know who it was but someone put that and i was like that's good that's good it's open-ended it but, is because it's like looking forward to working with it's you it's optimistic to the booking, it can, be, it can mean anything. anything yeah what do you put i use that um definitely if it's something related around a booking because i'm always looking forward to it i'm excited when someone reaches out for yeah, a business same. you know and to see what that new project is going to be yeah, and then sometimes it's like warmest regards, best regards. Uh, warm. <laughs> Ciao. Or, or sometimes, sometimes I'm like, how many, how many exclamation points did I put in this again? Oh, shit, I gotta, I gotta, I, gotta, I can't seem so excited. Yeah. Oh man, this is. Is, Am I shouting with the? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's email like formality warfare. It, it's like it, it's like oh, no, this isn't a text true. message. We got to seem more serious or something. My husband always laughs at me because I'll have if I'm sending an email. Let's say it's, it's a project, or I may need a favor for someone. He's, he's like, you will literally spend two hours on the damn email, which sucks. <laughs> just formatting it so just it seems formatting, perfect. formatting, right? So it's right and rereading it and then just making sure. Um, you know, because years ago, um, my old college boyfriend, his mom, she was so, I love her to death. She was so proper and so focused on like making sure you speak the right way, you pronounce things the right way, you write the And so... I remember we I even talked to her and I'm like, oh yeah, me and such and such, me and such and such. And she's like, no, such and such and I, and right? I. And so I'm a young kid at this point, but things like that always stuck with mm-hmm. me. And she told me, she's like, you know, people will always remember how you speak. So always make sure you do, you know, you write and do that right. So it's just always stuck That's in my so head. true. Even yeah. in text messages, people just judge the hell out of you. Oh yeah, I'm a judger. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's weird because in my mind, I'm like, ah, who cares? But I can't assume everyone yeah. thinks that. Like mm-hmm. my favorite thing to do is is just to use your Y O U R which not with for nothing for all of them just because I don't want to have to type that out. But see, I'll but, judge you for that. People, I, I'm, I've I've been realizing people judge the hell out of yes. me for that, and it's just so annoying. I'm like, dang, guys, just yes. can we just say this is a universal <laughs> your? It makes it easier for all of us. Or then you're mortified if I accidentally use it the wrong way on a post or something, and then I catch it like an hour later. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> delete a mean post. Edit. Yeah, oh, it, it's 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 completely the worst. Yeah, it is. It's anxiety ridden. Trust. Or like when I'm texting a girl for the first time, like whatever it is, like Tinder or a text, I'm like, like okay, it has to be perfect. <laughs> I know she's judging me. Like, oh, it's so much pressure. Right. We just want to know that you got an education. That's all. I guess that's what it is. I, I need to stop saying yours. Like, who's, yeah, this, who's this hillbilly over right. here? You can't even put an apostrophe exactly. R-E. Oh, God. So how many how many people do you manage uh, in, in your agency? Oh, wow. Um, I represent. Or represent. We have, okay, yes. Represent. Yes. We, so it's different than managing. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I'm just an agent. Okay. And um, we have about. 85 87 right now i just signed two new people so holy shit yeah i gotta go back and recalculate i know that's a I lot can't. <laughs> who are you telling why is it so many because we have great you know it's a lot but it's still not a lot like there's still room in, in parts of my the roster you know with male talent i'm definitely always looking for good strong male talent both commercial and fashion and um i'm just trying to create a board where there is um you know, diversity within the board, but also just not stacking it with the same looks. Mm. So there's that variety because, you know, models are competing against each other. They're competing against other agencies. I don't want them competing internally because when clients reach out to agencies, they're reaching out to me, the other agencies. And so they are, I don't, I want to be able to provide, you know, my top two cream of the crop in that, in the category that they want. And, you know, for the best. Do you find that, 
a handful of models to get a majority of the work just because of how good they are. And, yeah, I mean that's. Uh, or e- or even even if you don't choose them, like the the client's the client. always I don't choose choosing them. them. Yeah, the client. It's it's got to be rough for like the seventy five other people. <laughs> well, luckily, more than a handful book consistently mm-hmm. for me, but it is it's hard because one thing. I know exactly how they feel because I've sat in their shoes, you Uh, know? So as I mentioned earlier, when you kind of, you don't get a lot of bookings from your agency and you don't hear from them and you kind of feel like, oh my God, did they forget about me? And no, you know, we, we didn't, at least I didn't. It's just that um, when clients request something, you got to send them things that fit the, the look that they're going for. And then you hope for the best. It's like you're always trying to put your best foot forward. Yeah. So it, it, I get it because like you want that contract, whatever. But then it's like, oh, I got this guy, but this girl just kills it. You know, it, it's got to yeah, be so hard. It is. It, it's a, that's the hard part of the business. It's like where, nothing personal. Yeah, but. it's not personal at all. And I do my best. Um, as I can't say I always succeed, but I do my best to touch base, you mm. know, to just send an email. If it's someone that hasn't booked in a while to send an email and I had one talent, the time I felt the worst. And um, because, again, I try to do my best to touch base and I, I know that feeling. We had one person reach out to us and, you know, they kind of felt lost in, in the midst of everything. Like they didn't and know like, where they were. They the, yeah, and, and just like hadn't, hadn't communicated with us in some time. And, um, and even though, like, when we first met and we signed him on, we knew he would be a challenge because he has a very high fashion look in this area. And DC is very commercial. It's so you know? not high fashion. Yeah. Which I hate. Yeah, exactly. It's high fashion when we're doing trade shoots and things like that. We create the fun that we want. But in terms of clients, needs and paying clients, it's more commercial. So sad reality. That is a sad reality. And so, you know, when he emailed us and he was like, you know, I just haven't heard from you guys in the whole nine. And it's not that we hadn't submitted him and stuff like that, you know. And so I reached out to him personally um, and just was explained everything and just said, hey, listen, you know, don't forget, my door is always open. You're like, hey, man, you got to move to New York. New York. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's something like with so many people on it, and I'm sure like not all of them get work all the time. It's just natural mm. order of things. It's, it's so interesting when I see people who are signed to agencies around here, mostly around here. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, do you even do anything, though? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like an awkward sort of like you're signed but are you working and around here most talent need to understand that just because you're signed it doesn't stop the work you do behind the scenes Mm -hmm. i was a signed model but i also did a whole lot of freelancing i hustled for my jobs you know between here and in new york everything in between and um and so the work doesn't stop i think that signing with an agency also helps to give you some validation as a model very true and very true. it happened to me you know once i got signed by the reputable agencies people took me more seriously and so like a new york agency or something like that yeah yep and um and so you run into this thing because i think models are the most used people and you may have a different take on that as a photographer but i think that we're always expected to just give of our time and everything you know and a lot of times people take that time, but with no reward than just the pictures. And I know the pictures are great, but we don't even have the rights to those pictures. You know what I mean? Oh, that's so true. Yeah. And so then you don't, you'll have uh, photographers or clients or whoever that won't provide snacks or food or lunch or anything to make that model feel comfortable. That burns me up more than anything. It's a two way street. You know, if you mm-hmm. are going to take that free time of a model, because you're getting their expertise, their professionalism, their. They're bringing your vision to life. And you're talking about not if it's like paid, but if it's just you're working yeah, together like a collab, exactly. essentially. Take care of that model because she'll speak kindly of you. She'll mm-hmm. work with you again. She'll spread the good word because good word spreads faster than anything else. You know, well, bad news, but um, <laughs> right you know, behind bad news. Yeah, right behind that. So I just feel that there is that. That's true. You know, I've never thought about it like that. Like, yeah, it, you you make a lot of sense. The fact that. Models come, yep. they help make our shoots better. Absolutely. And sometimes models have to do their own makeup. Yeah. They have to style themselves. Bring their own wardrobe. Yeah. I mean, bring like then, a couple pairs of shoes. They come in, there's their hands yes. full. And, and <laughs> then it's go like, go get your manicure. Go get, no one thinks about it. It's like they, they the paid cost. for that travel. Yep. Like they had to like do their brows bef- the night before. Absolutely. And then we just, then as photographers, like, and I'm guilty of it too, it's like, <laughs> We'll, we'll take photos with them and they'll get maybe get the photos like a month after they even on exactly. Instagram. And then they feel like they're harassing you because they're asking for photographs because that's the only way they get to promote and to, to show yeah. of all their time and effort getting up early. Let's not even put the getting up early into the mix, you know? So 
um, I advocate so hard for my talent because no one else does. And that's why I tell them, you know, you communicate with me. When you're on set of a job, if they want you to go extra hours, no, you tell them, you know what? Let me call my agent and double check. Yeah. Let me be the bad guy for you. Because again, people will try to use models to their advantage and say, oh, can you just go a few more hours and go? And, and, and a lot people of, do that to photographers too. Can you yeah, just say a few more hours? Exactly. Like, and I try to respect the whole industry because I also let my models know that if a photographer wants to shoot with you for free, don't. Don't, that is not the expectation. You know, that is them giving of their time to you because you have your expenses too, you know? True. And you're behind the scenes and no one understands the work that you guys do in the post-editing process. So it's, I just want everyone to be valued. Well, but there's that <laughs> aspect where they don't even, you guys don't even own the photos. Yeah. You know, yep. and, and as photographers, especially when models ask for the raw photos or just mm -hmm. unedited, it's like, I never know how to feel about that because yep. sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't care. But then a lot of times I'm like, uh, ah, yeah. this is my work. Yeah. And that is something that I think the industry has to do better with because, um, you know, I can, I speak more intelligently or, or, or verse from the model standpoint, but you know, sometimes the photographers, you guys will sell the pictures or you use them for something that benefits you mm. and the model makes no money from that. You know, that's true. yeah, they, that, that was actually something I recently dealt with. I love your opinion on it. So you see that photo like right behind you? Uh -huh. So not that photo, but I have, I have a series of photos where I just use photos from shoots I've done. Mm -hmm. And the majority of them were collab shoots. Well, I think if not all of them, because I'm lacking these client stuff, right? <laughs> and I had a painter paint on them. And then I sold those mm -hmm. paintings. Uh, not all of them. I sold a couple. And only one model was like, hey, I think I earned, I think I deserve a piece of that. Mm. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm like, you don't like at the time I'm like, you don't <laughs> like now in front of you, I'm kind of feeling like I should have maybe given yeah. it, but like, but and even a little <laughs> bit still now I'm like, I'm like, I don't think you deserve it because one, it's not a photo of you. I, I just used the base of you and mm -hmm. it was painted over, okay. but it's still tricky. You it, know, it's that, tricky, but, that picture but what do you think one, about yeah. that? Do you think I should, no, I should give her like 50 bucks or something? Yeah, something. You're probably right. Something I for goodwill right. because she put her time in there too, you know? That's true. And I think more people should do that. And I just feel like, Contract or no contract, you know, it's all about goodwill to people. So you're saying models are people? Yes, we are. <laughs> we are humans. <laughs> yes. Models have feelings? Yes, right. You guys and, just don't and, go home and, and... we eat. You guys just don't go yes. home, put a face mask on and just and just hibernate until right. until you're summoned through the until DM? It's ready. Yeah. <laughs> face perfect. Oh my Ding. God. <laughs> Ding dong. Yeah, it's, it's funny, right? What do you think about this whole collab culture, though? Because you, you've come from an... Uh, you're just not much older than I'm not going to ask your age or anything, but... <laughs> You know, where, where this whole collab culture wasn't as prominent, I imagine, where it was more, it was just called test shoots and those were maybe mm -hmm. treated differently than Instagram collab culture. Yeah. What do you think about this whole explosion of, of collab culture? But not only that, the idea that a girl who should never have been a model is <laughs> now thinks she's a model and, and like yeah. she starts getting the idea in her head that she could become a full-time model. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, yeah. what do you, what do you think of that? I hate Instagram for that. <laughs> uh, Instagram's got these girls thinking they're yeah. all models. And then they submit and then they wonder why. Because there is a difference oh, between yeah, a real model and an Instagram model. What is it? Over what is it? <laughs> I can even I had to ask for you before you went first. I was like, what is it? Please let us know. Oh my gosh. It's in God, it's it's hard to verbally describe, but it's easier to just show it, it's easier to show in images, you know. Um, it's even, it's in the way a woman poses, you know, mm. models pose very differently than non-models who were just <sighs> posing for the gram, if they, if you will. And, and, and it's, it's in what, gosh, what else? How do I explain this verbally for you? It's a hard one. It's a hard one to explain. It's something that's, that's almost felt. Yeah, it, it really, it is. And that's what people ask me, well, how do you make your decisions? Like, it's a feeling, you know, I have a feeling of what the market wants. I have a feeling of what sells and and because i also don't want to just put people on the roster just to fill space because mm. if you're not going to get work then i'm doing you a disservice so um but it's, it is a feeling so do you think that like an average looking girl i mean like just mm -hmm. i don't know how, how else to define that but her modeling she starts getting the idea that she can become this big model and it's just sad because sure she might do a lot of shoots she might take great mm -hmm. shots yeah but she'll it's like the, there won't be this New York type model. I no. feel like there's this weird disconnect where they start doing a bunch of shoots. They start 
um, getting some actually good photos. Yeah. You know, they start learning to pose there's better. They there's start some good things. Yeah, out there's there, yeah. there's some great great girls, but they are just missing like that thing, that thing, that thing or something, or uh-huh. the height, or or that thing. <laughs> yeah. And you see all these submissions where you're just like, oh, it's just not. It's, it's just not, not there. Yeah, like, yeah. it's just not there. It's rough. It's so rough, and it's hard. Um, and it's harder when it's people that you know, or their parents, mm-hmm. you know, and they just want all the advice in the world and all the, you know, is my child good? Is my child good? And it's, oh my oh, God, it's, that's the, the challenging last part. Last month I had this mom and daughter, the daughter, um, she wants to model. She was like 15, 16. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, pretty girl, like super pretty, but I'm just like, I'm an athletic, so she's in good shape. But I'm just like. Uh, is she model material? And it's right. awkward because her mom is there sitting me, looking me in the eyes, <laughs> exactly. asking Bruce, is, is my, is, <laughs> is my daughter model? Does she actually have a chance? And she's, and this is a serious question. This is like right. serious. It's like, like serious. And, and it's hard. And I'm like, and I'm looking her in the face and I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know. Right. I'm like, you could be wrong. I could be know? wrong. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Or she could just be a hot girl on Instagram. Like, you know, I, I, I don't know. And, and especially <laughs> yeah. when they ask me, I'm like, and so I look at her and I'm like, all right, well, first of all, I'm like, you're 15, 16. I'm like, you're not tall enough yeah. for, for runway. Yes. But, and, and, and so it seems safe to be like, you could do print. <laughs> But even then, I don't know if I'm right. Like, I'm just like, oh, you could do print. Yeah. You know? And, but. And, and, then, and then she's like, and she's like, how do I grow? I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm like, I like, uh, hang upside down at night. And she's like, really? And I was like, no. I was like, no. Oh I was like, no, do not do that. <laughs> but. <laughs> and, and so it, it's, it's, it's just as harding because I don't want to tell someone no. Yeah. Because you don't want to ruin someone's dream. Yeah. Because you're not the dream maker. You, you know, and. I don't feel like we have rights to do that. Exactly. So I just, you know, the, 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 sometimes the easiest way is it's because the real reality is it's not a good fit for my agency, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and that, but to try, you know, shoot, try to grow, do your research. Oh my God. I just wish people would do research, you know, because like Kingsley's more commercial than it's high fashion guys. <laughs> yes. Like, if- or just even in the market, you know, Research and understand what you want to get into. Mm-hmm. If you want to get into commercial modeling, then or acting, research that. You know, do your homework. If you want to get into fashion modeling, do your homework. Look at what the parameters are of those things are, and have a real come to Jesus with yourself. Do you fit that mold? You know, uh, like be honest. Yeah, be honest with yourselves. I think so many what people they don't are not know? honest with themselves. Um, listen. There are people that defy the odds all the time. And I have one gem who I just adore. And she's a petite model and actress. And she hustles. You know what I mean? This girl, I think, can make it just because of her personality, her drive, her professionalism. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and she's a gorgeous girl. And, but she knows how to use her assets, you know, and also enhance the things that the, the industry may say is a flaw, oh, you know, okay. and which is not, it's not for her, but she's turning that into something positive. And so there are those things, but I, but I still think even someone like her, she had to take a look at herself and say, okay, what's my strengths? What am I going to do with it? And how am I going to work everything out? So it's not trying to understand if you're a good fit or not. As you said, maybe they don't know, but assess yourself, you know, and see, can you be one that breaks the mold? You know, because you have, you mean like have them look at something and be like, am I a commercial model? Am I a runway model? Yes, am I a fashion model? Yes. Am I, uh, I don't know what else there is. Yeah. Print parts, modeling, hand modeling, you know, ah. a fitness, a fit model, Yeah, a sport model, yeah. whatever it is. Assess that. See what category that you think that you fit, fit in. Um, and then work hard towards that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 weird because it's one of the only industries that, that there's you can only work so hard. Yeah, you know you can only work so hard that in you can't change how you look. Oh, no. I mean you can, but like let's be you know, but you can there's yeah. you can only change so much. But right, because like you said, you can't change your height. <laughs> yeah, you can't change your height. Yeah. Like and it and it sucks. Yeah, I wish I was taller. I'd be hollering at mm-hmm. way different girls, <laughs> but I got I got to stick to five nine and below. Actually, five eight because I'm gonna go as tall as me. Five eight yeah. and below, you know. <laughs> So it's, it's just this weird sort of, um, just reality, which, which is why people, I think sometimes get a, get a bad rap in the modeling agency because, or the modeling world, even just the fashion world, because it's a very mm-hmm. honest it is. area. 
It is. Like, you, like I've, I've, I've imagined that you've probably had gigs yep. where you just had to be like, look, yep. your nose is too big. Yep. Like, and it's, it's <laughs> awkward. Teeth yeah, and, and it's awkward, but it's... And I sat in the same chairs when agents told me I, I had a gap and I had to fix my teeth or that, you know, I have things that I'm very insecure about. And I was super insecure about those body factors growing up and getting into the modeling industry. Um, so like I have scoliosis, you know, so my back curves a little bit and that was super, uh, I was super insecure about that. Oh, especially, wow. you know, and it's so crazy now because as I've gotten older, I embrace it. It yeah. is what it is, you know, and it's not a big deal. And no one saw it, but me, <laughs> that's the sad part when you realize all of our insecurities, we're pretty much the only ones tripping about it. You Makes know? me look in the mirror yeah. every day. Yeah, very true. So, but yeah, you know, so understanding both sides of it. So I, even when I have to tell someone certain things about themselves, I try to do it in a manner where it doesn't hurt their feelings or <sighs> make them run out of there feeling like, a, you know, the world is coming to an end. It's heartbreaking. It is. <laughs> it's so heartbreaking. That is true. Yeah. <sighs> God, Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want. I don't want to go on and sto about stories. You know, just like times where I'll, I was maybe just too honest with people who were just part time models. Yeah, and it came to bite me in the butt. Like you're really mean. I'm like, no, I was just oh. being honest. I, had to, I just had to call it out for what it was. <laughs> yes. Right, but there's, and then you probably learned there's the, the tactic, the tactful way to do it. Yeah, I'm know? learning. I'm slowly learning yeah. this. These <laughs> things. Sometimes I'm way too blunt. Oh yeah, I am. I'm a blunt person. You know, my friends will say that. My family, especially. Um, so I had to learn those things too. When that whole, you know, say something nice first and then go into mm -hmm. <laughs> what you want to say that may be perceived as negative, but yeah, people have feelings. So if someone's a model in DC and they want to do fashion stuff, should they just move to New York? It, yeah, they should do that or they should be will willing to commute. Ah, and you know, I was, I was, I was like asking for a friend because, uh, <laughs> myself because i'm like i love fashion photography but i'm like mm -hmm. it's not here yeah. or at least the jobs maybe start going up and doing it mm. and seeing what the demand is you know i mean that's if i can do things all over again i probably would have left when i was younger you know to do it really? but yeah absolutely i now i'm a believer and if, if it's in your heart and you want to do it then do it mm. find a way to do it find a way so that you don't look back on life and regret choices you made and so um but now, but then again, as I got older, I felt, okay, I'm too old to be slumming it in New York, <laughs> you know, trying to make it. That's kind of how I feel like at 28. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm like, I, oh I don't know. I, 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 feel like, I feel like I could do it, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, mm, like just commute. Yeah. So I did the commuting thing, you know, mm. and I would go. But then again, when I was modeling, I always had a full-time job. And oh, wow. so that I've had a full-time job until last year. <laughs> When I fully resigned to do Kingsley full time. Wow, so, congrats. That's awesome. Yeah. Long time coming, you know? And again, that's one of those hindsight things too. Like I wish I did it earlier, but timing is everything, you mm -hmm. know? So I think this was a perfect time for me to do it. Um, my confidence level, the network I'd created. Uh, but yeah, move early if you're going to do it. And then. But you can get like that hunch. Just, just freaking yeah, go for it. Just exactly. cross it off the checklist. Seriously. Because if you fail, then what? You pick yourself back up. Try again, come back home, you know. So you work with a lot of photographers? I do. Uh, and so it's, it's really funny because this is a photography-centered podcast, <laughs> but I'm never scared to not talk about it. All right. This is probably one of the few times I could talk about it, right? <laughs> so, like, you work with a lot of photographers. Yeah. Um, what are your opinions on that? Like, do you cringe at stuff like that? Like, how do you, like, what's, what's your relationship with photographers these days? I have a great relationship with photographers. Um... But I stay away from the ones that creepy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or <laughs> how, how do you find these things out? Like, is it just a model will be like he? Yeah, it's it's typically a model or ex experience that I've had because mm -hmm. I also shot with a lot of photographers, and that was my first time getting to know them. You mm -hmm. know, and a lot of these relationships have lasted through that, and I've gained new ones. But um, I always try to meet if I'm in the planning process. I try to meet photographers first. Um, talk to them, see where their studio is, what it's all about. Because again, I am a woman in an industry. Um, photographers are male dominated and I take the safety of myself and sure. other women and, and not just the women, but the men too, because 
Anything can happen to anybody. It's part of the whole collab culture is that like, yeah. let's meet up with this random guy on Instagram. Exactly. And so to me, again, coming from the old school, that's just a scary thought for me. So, Super scary. Right. So where I can control it, I do, you mm-hmm. know? And then I always tell the talent to just let me know because it's not about me wanting to oversee what my talent does. Um, but I know a lot of people, so never hesitate to run someone by me and say, hey, Joy, you heard of this person. And if I don't, I can vet them through my industry, you know, and find out anything I need to know. So, Is my studio creepy? Uh, I know I have not heard. Whoa, that. whoa. Did you guys? Uh, <laughs> dang, I got to fix some stuff up no, in here. No, it's not. Do, do, it's do not. I got to turn it's some more lights cool. on or something? What do you mean? <laughs> no, I said it's not creepy. You went, uh, I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> Man, people getting the heebie-jeebies in here. No, but I've shot in the studio before. So I'm very familiar with this building and the whole... Oh, wait, in this studio? Not this one, but one around the corner. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, Mm -hmm. like 10 guys work out of there. And and, and none of them ever working, so I'm very confused. (laughs) Now, creepy photographers, man, that is something that since I started photography, I knew I'd never wanted to get that rap or never be that guy. bad rap to have. Like, yeah, and so I guess the whole thing is that like... If you're a creepy photographer trying to actually take it seriously, you're the person we don't want to know that right. we're creepy. Like, so how do you treat stuff like that? Oh, that's, uh, Is it just like blacklisted? Just like, I it, don't want to work with you? It's not. I, I would not. I try to just give all the facts, you know. Mm. Um, and, and there are times where I've worked with photographers who I haven't had the luxury of meeting. Um, and then if I'm booking my talent for something, I literally, I tell them everything. I'm like, I can't. But, what I see online is what I see. It yeah. looks legit to me. They're connected to certain people that I know. And so I just tell them, be careful. Do your diligence. You know, if you get a gut, gut feeling, get the hell out of there. That's very true. Yeah. But it's so hard, I feel like, sometimes because you're in a situation where it's like you already signed up for it. Yeah. I've heard some horror stories where Miles was just like, I felt so uncomfortable. Yeah. But I felt bad because I just didn't want to leave. And and then the model's worried about them getting a reputation for being, yeah, you know, leave. yeah, for yeah. being that mean yeah. girl, you yeah. know. But and that's why I tell my talent, let me be that person. Ah. If my talent has to walk out, if it's a paid booking and something is just not right, you let me know and you leave. I'll deal with it, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm not going to put my talent's life or anything at risk. There's nothing that's worth it, you know. I've been in compromising positions as a model, and you know, luckily I had the gut and the strength to just get up and leave. Because it oh. didn't feel right. And that was, I had this episode in New York. And so, and it was such what a happy, sketchy studio. It just, you know, I'm glad I don't know what could have happened. Oh, you know? but you felt it. Because I left. I left. I felt it. And this guy, you went up there for the photo shoot. It was already in a creepy apartment up these windy stairs. And oh, yeah, in New it York? Was, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was so gross. It sounds terrible. Then you terrible. walk in there and there is a, a young lady did answer the door but then the guy who's supposed to be taking your photos is laying in bed with the sheets up to here. What and the I'm hell? Seeing, and I'm just like, what is this? And so I'm waiting in the quote unquote waiting room for my turn because there's another model in there. And I'm just, the door was shut and I'm just listening and it just sounded creepy. I got up and I left. That is so yeah. creepy. Said, they were like shooting behind a door yeah. and like he was in bed and stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> what kind of photography was he doing? I have no idea. So like I said, I'm like, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, I've heard horror stories mm-hmm. from models before. Yeah. I, honestly, I, I love it when they call them out on Instagram. That's my favorite. Yes. I think I think they should. Yes. Pull the whistle on them. I agree. Or the or the photographers that want to, okay, now why don't you take the to put the strap down here? And then they're inching their way to you trying to get naked uh, or get, you know, and and pick like I came here for a fashion shoot. Why is why am I in my bra and underwear? You know, it's just Things can happen, and when you're dealing, we get caught up in the girls, hype too during a shoot too. Yep. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, young girls that don't really have the the balls yet, you know, oh. to stand up and say something. Especially if the photographer has like some sort of clout, they right. feel like this is a good idea. He knows what he's doing. Yep. So it can't be bad. So it, it's so many things can happen. And I always scenario. say it's like look at their portfolio, know mm-hmm. what you're getting into. If he does too many er- of those erotic shots, shots yeah. then he's probably going to ask you to do some erotic shots. Yep. Don't do ass- your homework. Yeah, if he's a street <laughs> photographer, he's trying to shoot fashion, he probably won't do fashion well. That's actually why I, I advocate for photographers to mm-hmm. always have a photo of themselves for their profile, at least. Yeah. I'm different. I make a lot of content so you can see me and get a grip of who I am. Yep. I'm not like most photographers. Yep. Most photographers hide behind a logo and you just see their work and they might not even type a caption. Right. You know, and so it's, I, and I tell people, I'm like, yo, look, that's, I agree. I'm, like, I'm like, that's creepy. Like you need to have it like, have, have like your highlights, use that to show who you are, yeah. show your studio, show your space, show what you do. 
Yes. Because it makes models more comfortable too. Absolutely. When there's full transparency. Mm-hmm. It, because, you know, we, not every photographer can afford to have a studio space. And, you know, maybe your studio is in the basement in your apartment and it's perfectly fine or your house. But let us see what that is. Let's see the that it's safe to come to and that let's see your face so we can at least feel like we know you. <laughs> yeah. You look like you take a shower or something. Right. Like what's going on? You're like a 40 year old guy with yeah. a beard and like, but they use that excuse. Well, I'm behind the camera, you know, so I don't yeah. want to promote myself. And I'm like, that's not, it's just about making yourself human mm-hmm. because that you want all of our images. You're picking us to work with based on everything you see on our social media, our websites and all of yeah, that. You see everything, 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 oh, yeah. everything. Everything. <laughs> See, guys, that's that was a primer for how not to be a creepy photographer. Yes, Jeez, <laughs> don't be creepy. I, I it's can't, not cool. I can't stand y'all. Y'all really piss me off. Yeah. Give a bad name for everyone. So, Kingsley, I kind of want to like go back to like what okay. that is because that's that's really cool. I mean, it's you don't meet many people who run agencies that are in charge of a lot of people. What are what is what do your what's like a majority of your clients look like? Is it because you said it's very commercial, so yeah. it's. You know, it's not freaking mm-hmm. maybe, but it's not like Gucci, Nike, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah but like exactly. it's 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 DC. It's it's what right. we have. It's what we have, and embrace what we have. Mm-hmm. You know, and stop running from it. But our clients have varied. It, it's funny because I think our commercial, like I'm, I'm sure our commercial talent thinks that we're heavily fashion. You know, because a lot of our posts are fashion. Because unfortunately, a lot of the commercial work that our talent does is not. It's either a video, you know, or it's not something that is such a fab picture. Whereas when you were doing a fashion photo shoot, it's all about the shot. Every single thing is in there. Yeah. So when the models are in magazines and stuff, that definitely is a more aesthetically yeah. beautiful imagery, you know? So that's what we, we, I mean, by default post more of, you yeah, know? I mean, why not? Yeah. And so, but with, in terms of our commercial clients, I mean, just most recently we, um, five of our, our actors were booked for Reagan National Airport. They did oh. um, a series of videos um, promoting the kiosk and the airports and the restaurants and stuff. And then some of our bigger clients have been Olympus Camera, Canon nice, Camera. Nice. Um, who else? And so they, and so since it's the commercial side, not necessarily this fashion side for like, because mm-hmm. those commer- they'll do like video ads or yeah, just video build, print, like, ads, yeah. print ads and stuff like mm-hmm, that. Yeah. Okay. Like Canon and Canon and Olympus were all video ads, you know, and they were highlighting their new um, cameras and stuff like that. Oh, so, so it'll be like that was, moment where they're wow. exactly. <laughs> exactly. This awesome. Taking a picture of the family together yeah. on the beach. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Or then, or, or a lot of hands and parts involved in it because they're either showing a feature. So their hands are showing. How do you even, and, how do you even get those I mean, oh I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to give away your sauce, but like, yeah. what's weird to me is I wouldn't even know how to approach that. Yeah. How do you even get to that point where you're working with Canon Olympus as a commercial? That's so, mm-hmm. it's, it, it'd be so easy to just start a business and say you're doing that yeah. to actually be doing it. What's that divide? I, I mean, I don't know if this answers your question. The divide is hard work and networking. <laughs> so it's literally who you know. It's who you know, you know, because. I've worked hard in this business for the last 18 years, going on 19, you know, deep I've been deep in this and, and I've always had tried to maintain good relationships. And one thing I always tell my talent, I tell anyone, your reputation precedes you. If you are known as a person that's easy to work with, that's a hardworking person that is considerate, kind, professional, the whole nine, that reputation will go ahead of you. And so I've been able to form and meet some of the most amazing people. And so, you know, once, once I started Kingsley, it's like, I almost wish I had more faith in myself when I started because I was so scared and hesitant. And there was some, some steps that I didn't take because I was like, no. Hesitant of what? Um, not being accepted, not succeeding. By who? By me. Oh, by me. that like fear of. That fear of failure, you know? Mm. And, but the reason I did it was because when I look back in my lifetime, my most successful accomplishments have come from some of the things I've been most afraid to do. And again, that goes back to sports, but it was even going to play volleyball overseas, leaving my family. I was terrified. I'm 21 years old, you know, wow. just gre- fr- fresh out of college. I'm going to go across the country and live there, you know, and play and live in a country. I don't know the language. I don't know anybody. So, um, but that was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, even though, 
the, one of the lowest points happened at that time too. But so I look at that and I'm like, you know what? No, you do it. What was that lowest point for asking? Um, my older brother was murdered. Your what? Yeah. Your older brother, my little oldest, bro- oldest brother. Yeah. Wow. In the states. In the states. Mm-hmm. Was it? His, it, like, was it accident or was it, I mean, murder is pretty intentional. It's very, very intentional. Um, yeah, my family's gone through a little bit of, of. Damn, sorry to hear that. Rest yeah. in peace. No, that's, I mean, it's part of my story now. That's some heavy stuff. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, my father was murdered when I was nine and a half years old. Whoa. My family had just migrated, you know, into the U.S. Then three weeks into living in Maryland, he was, again, it was an armed robbery. He was at work. and Your dad or your brother? My brother brother i mean okay. my dad and then my brother but this is what happened wrong. to your brother the armed robbery yeah so um both of them were armed robberies wow yeah in maryland dad in maryland brother in virginia <sighs> yeah <laughs> so sorry so you know it, i literally found out about my brother's murder the day i landed in holland to play no way volleyball. yeah my first stepping foot on that soil and that's gotta be wow. insane to deal with like you, you get that call here you are and you're you're literally on a high you're, yeah you're, i'm at my team my my team manager's house i'm with my team captain there was one other american girl on our team and um and my coach and i get a phone call i don't even think my family knows where i am at this point and this is pre-cell <sighs> phones this is 1999 yeah and um and so the team manager's like hey joy the phone is for you and i'm like who the hell knows where to call me? Yeah, I just almost. landed like three hours ago. <laughs> so then um, I get the strange male voice on the other line and they were just like, you know, Joy, I'm sorry to say your brother's been murdered. And I was like, wait, what? Oh, so I'm in a room full of strangers and just broke down. Yeah. Just lost it. And, um, and again, just thinking about, you know, when you think about the being in a country like that that doesn't experience that kind of crime, you know, I was the only African-American on my team. So here I am in another country, a black person with every, like when you go overseas, you, you understand what people perceive of the U.S. from what they see on TV. Mm-hmm. So I think I carry just like what black America is to them. And then for something that tragic to happen, they were like, wait, what? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I went home for the funeral for three weeks and um, my coach was gracious enough. He was Willing to let me out of my contract. That's heavy. Yeah. That's heavy. So you did so you stopped the volleyball for that no, season? No, I went back. Oh, you I went played, back? Oh yeah, I played. You know, because it was my dream. I worked hard for that in my college. So years. up until a point all your life, it was just volleyball, volleyball, it was, volleyball. Yeah, it was sports. And um, so it was the only thing that I knew mm-hmm. the day before I left. I saw my brother. I said goodbye. He was so proud of me for accomplishing my goals. And so I was like, I'm gonna play for him. That's, and that's what I, I did. Can't, what drives someone to do to just break into somewhere, hold a gun, and then just kill someone? Like, why? Why do they have to do that? Just, just lock them in a closet or something? It's so yeah, uh, yeah. It just because you know, not only do they ruin the victims' lives, but you ruin your own life too. You know, because fortunately, in both my father's and my brother's murder cases, the, we did find them. You know, God. in my father's case, they were caught three weeks later. In my brother's case, it was a three-year search for who killed him. You know, wow. so. How do you even find someone like that? It's just a bullet. Yeah. Well, it was a routine cop stop that picked up one of them and um, on some, I don't know, speeding red light. I don't know. And so that's how it happened. And because wow. he was wanted for other things, he kind of snitched on that. Oh. And that's what broke the case. It feels good when you get that. It's like you, you kind of need that closure, especially for something like that. It's like, I can't believe they're just out there on the loose. And oh, yeah. They did this. It's, it's not just that. It's, it's the way that it happens to yeah. everyone. Well, two of them are out now. They've been out on parole. Wow. Yeah. So, and one I, God, this is getting deeper than I wanted. But, um, but it's, it's, this is it. This is life. You know did what you I mean? Did you run into one of them? Um, I have not. Oh, that's I saw what you're about one to on say. Facebook. Yeah. <sighs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you think they're a changed person now? Do you think that they could, do better be or ha- be a better person now i hope so you know some part of you just want to go kill them though yeah do it i did in a visceral way you, yeah like, I not did. like you're actually gonna do it but like Absolutely. i know i would be like i want to yeah. get my revenge we'll try sitting in trial and looking at them you know and having to see them and having to listen to them try to make up a story you know, about I, it. i've been in a very similar situation except mm-hmm. the only difference was that no one was home mm. and i remember yeah. seeing them in trial too and it was uh the situation was just really quickly was uh it was like four or five guys wow. broke into our, it was when I was in college, but they broke into our house and uh, they all were carrying guns. Luckily, no one was home. 
I almost stayed home that day mm. because I was really big into music. And I, and I was always on, I've always been on this thing where I would happily sacrifice enjoyment for my craft. Mm. And at that day, I, would, I remember I, I was like almost about to do it. But my friends were like, now nah, we're going to go jet skiing and stuff. And I was like, all right. Oh, wow. But we came home to police around our house. That's and just crazy. guys in handcuffs, like windows broken. So they broken. got them immediately. They caught them in the house. Holy Somehow crap. our neighbor heard them kicking down the back door. Oh my and God. And they caught them in the house. Like literally we go into our house and all of our stuff's disheveled, laptops and backpacks. And that's a violation in itself, right? Yeah. And you, you feel, feel so feel, violated. Yeah. Like after that, we, I ended Absolutely. up moving, moving from the house and get my own place. So I was like, I was like, no, but yeah, they were all armed and we only knew they were armed because when I, when, when I was moving out, mm -hmm. I found a, a, a cache of guns upstairs in our attic. No way. So, yeah, so before they all dipped, when the cops were coming, they went upstairs they went to the and attic, hid, hid their guns, and then and then no, ran away. That's and crazy. what was crazy is when we got there, they caught like one of them in the act. Mm -hmm. He's like getting in the back of the cop car, and he's just like, "I didn't mean to do it," crying. And 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 you're just like, "I hate you. I yes. hate you. You would have probably killed, they yeah. killed me or done something bad to yeah. me." But the crazy part was seeing them in trial. Yeah, and it's just so nuts because. It's like their mom is there wailing. Yep. And you're just like, oh man, yeah. you're kind of reminded. And that's your reminded where you just ruined multiple lives. Yeah. Because I had to watch that too. And I had to watch their parents and their kids mm -hmm. and their family members there. And they don't want anything bad to happen to their son. And, and there was a sad part of me that didn't too. Yeah. I was like, you took my brother away from me for no reason. But yet I still there's a part of me that's just like, damn, you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison, you know? So the two, um, cause there were six people involved in my brother's murder. Wow. Um, or, yeah. So four are out and two are serving life sentences. So, and those are the ones that actually pulled the trigger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, but now you're there. You, you know? kind of, you kind of wish that when it happens, the, the cop would just line them up and <laughs> like that, that feels like justice in a weird way. It does. It's so it crazy, does. but it's, 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 it's adversity like that, that mm -hmm. makes you, you know, um, I was gonna say or me, but you, and yeah. this, it makes, too, it makes though. you a better person. Like it yeah. makes you a stronger person. It, it takes that drive. You appreciate life yeah. more because at 21, that shakes your world. Like it, you, I mean, it's different maybe because you said you had lost your father. So I'm sure that shook your world, but to have that happen, it's just, yeah. it, it puts the world in this perspective where, for me, at least, I was like, I, you know what? I'm going to do anything because if, if tomorrow's not promised, yeah, if, if tomorrow's not promised, then whatever yeah. I do today, it doesn't matter. Right. So if I sit before in the morning working on this project, it's like, right. well, I could get hit by a car getting oh Taco God, Bell tomorrow. Oh my gosh. You I, know, and it's, I it, think it's, that it's, all the and time, it's empowering in, in a weird way. I feel like yeah. people need to have a moment like that in their life where just shit yeah. hits the fan because it makes you appreciate everything else. It does. It does. And it's funny because I sometimes think I, I have morbid thoughts or whatever because I think that, you know, because in my life, all I have known is sudden tragedy. All I know is my father That's left so to go to sudden. work one morning and he didn't come back. <sighs> all I know is I said goodbye to my older brother. I got on a plane. I went to Holland and I never saw him again, you know? And so in life, like even with my husband, I'm, I'm always, you know, hey, text me when you get home. Like, I just mm, want to know yeah. because anything can happen. And so you... You can either let it handicap you or you can let it motivate you yeah. as, you know, you have as well, you know, and just like, hey, I'm going to live. That's why I'm like, I can do anything. Yeah. You know, why it's, not? it's like, I, I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, nothing's off limit. I'm yes. going to start an agency and have 75 <laughs> people, you know, and, and just take yeah. over this DC thing. Exactly. And do my thing. You kind of feel like that. You kind of feel like you're taking over the DC scene with this, what you're doing. Oh, I hope to make an impact. Yeah. I hope to make an impact. Um, taking over. I mean, that's like, you know, you know, you say that to yourself, I'm you over. know, like to, to your girls, you know, like, <laughs> right. Over. But in reality, yeah. it's, I hope that it just causes some, some, you know, just partnership, just realness and, and, and teamwork, you know, mm -hmm. but I definitely hope that Kingsley makes an impact for what our values are and what we believe in. I think it's cool. I think it, it adds some flavor to the city. Yeah. You know, it's it, it adds an element that's not government work. Yeah. It kind of gives it some more creative leverage in a way. Yep. I think so too. And and it, and it makes it fun. I, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I truly love it. And I'm so grateful that I stayed the course to accomplish what I wanted. So I'm, I am, you know, I think about it so much. I'm like, I am becoming what the American quote unquote dream is is really um just that i would have never thought i would be here from what i came from yeah you know not in a million years if you told me this would be my life would i have believed it because it just wasn't in my path 
these doors weren't open to me growing up. And, um, you know, my family grew up in less than, so when you think about my dad being murdered at nine and a half, my mom had four kids. I was the, the third child and a single parent in this country, no green card. We would, we just got oh, here, wow. you know? And so when I think about what immigrants are going through now, I'm reminded about what I went through and I'm reminded that people don't truly understand like the plight of the immigrant and what that difficulty in life and just how we want, we just want the same things. You know, we want to come to a country where we can do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's interesting. I, yeah. It's it's such a tough situation we're in these days. Yeah, the whole immigrant culture. But oh, I mean, yeah, look, we're like, not even gonna go there. Yeah, no, no, yeah. we're not we're not gonna go to politics. No, no, no. <laughs> yep. But yeah, no, I mean, like mm-hmm. you guys worked hard and you've built something. Now you're contributing back to the world. Back to it. God forbid we didn't let that one in. Yeah, for your family. And then it's like well, exactly I've been missing something. Yep. And so, and you know, and a lot of people have asked me like, why did you name it Kingsley? And it's funny because it's your last name, right? It is my last name, but more importantly, it's my father's name. Oh. You know? And my father died, and you know, my family being Nigerian and being always going to like community events and stuff, our names are, our last names are so important. And so, you know, we always were known as like, oh, you're the Nigerian family whose father was killed. And it was just always this thing there. And so part of me just wanted to bring positivity back into his name and just Oh, that's have cool. something to represent him. So that's where. So it, was, it wasn't because like, oh, I just want to put my name on it. You Boy, know? it sounds it, good. Right. But Kingsley's it's a cool a name, name, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, because that's his middle name. His middle name. So when my father died, we took on his middle name to incorporate into the last. That's why I have a hyphenated name, not by marriage, but by my father. Oh. And um, yeah, his name was Innocent Kingsley eBay. His name was Innocent? Mm-hmm. What a name. Yeah. So I love it. Is your actual <laughs> name Joy? My actual name is Joy. My middle name is more Nigerian, if you will. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's Ngozi. Nice. Yeah. So, Joy so, so what's, what's coming up? What's coming up with Kingsley? What's the plans oh, for 2019? Mm. Plans, plans, plans. You know? The, it's a vision. <laughs> the vision is to make our... Um, is to make our vision more known. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that people have embraced Kingsley at, at, with what we've been putting out there. And, but it's just kind of putting it in writing, put it in a voice that people can really understand and see what we're about. And then like goal wise, it's really, it's maintaining more, I don't know, organization, if you will, because Kingsley grew quicker than I thought it would grow really? in one year. I mean, honestly, I didn't, I didn't come into it with any expectations because I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't want to set myself up for disappointment, you know, like, oh, I said I was going to do this and I didn't. But now that I see what we're capable of and what we are able to do, it's really this year is going to be about marketing the agency. Because uh, I will say that it took us a year to build our roster of good talent. It took us a year to get strong clients under our belt. So now people see what we have, what we're capable of. So now it's really trying to reach out to clients that don't know about us. You know, that would be that would benefit from what we provide. So that's really it's going to be a big marketing. So bigger than D.C.? Perhaps. Oh, you know? like, like what do they say? Dream big and then dream bigger, right? Yeah. So that's true. <laughs> dream really big. But you actually yeah. would want to like branch out of DC because absolutely. Seems like, yeah, I mean, why absolutely. not? Right, build the empire. Yeah. Exactly. You know, freaking that sounds dope. So what about what if someone wants to apply to you guys? What's how's it? What apply. You, what's the your best way to do that? Is, is, it's coming from the horse's mouth I, right from now. From the horse's someone, mouth, right? Literally, I've had <laughs> girls be like, "I want these test shots for Kingsley." Oh, wow. Really? I swear to God. No way. Yeah. That, that girl oh. I was talking about who I was like, I don't know if you're, it was, it was to apply to your agency. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Specifically. It was, it was, it was to apply to you. I love that. Mm-hmm. That gives me goosebumps. I mean, I, I still ride on cloud nine, but you know, and I always say it, I wouldn't be here without the talent mm-hmm. because it's people you have worked with our talent. And so you'll post about it. Our, our talent will post about it. And then it just catches fire, you know? So it's just been a tremendous support from the inside and outside. So anyways, but to apply for Kingsley, um, you know, we're always looking for a full body shot, a head shot, preferably, I mean, it does not have to be a professional head shot, but yeah. if it's going to be a digital, you know, just clean with women, if your hair is natural, keep it natural. If it's, um, you have a ponytail, pull it back in a ponytail. We want to see your face, yeah. minimal makeup on and just wear 
fitted pants or jeans and a tank top. And then if it's a professional one, just have, you know, we'd love to see your smile. We'd love to see you with a serious face. Just kind of see you arranged there. Um, when people submit resumes, we don't need yeah, like What's your, up with that? What's up with this modeling resume that yeah, I see? That makes well, no sense to me. It makes a lot of sense because when you deal with commercial clients, they want to see what you've done. Oh, you mean like if yeah. they actually worked if, with someone? Yeah. Okay. If okay. You're, are you, have you acted before? What productions have you worked on? And so, so it's, you don't want to see that they were in Girl Scouts. You want to see, no. you, or, or like what bachelor degree they have. You exactly. want to see that Thank you. you've done actual work. <laughs> actual work in the industry, in the business. Okay. I don't care what currently private sector job you're working right now. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. not what it's about. So people do that. And I'm like, no, I don't need to know where you worked two years ago. And, <laughs> but fashion related, modeling related, absolutely. Do you want other Instagram followers? Does that help? Uh, I, we always check out the Instagram. Ah, yep, so models. you do always check oh, it. Yes. I mean, you have to, oh, it's your yes. portfolio, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, that's what, again, I give that task to our millennial, Curtis. Ah, <laughs> he's scouting. So yeah, so he checks out Instagram, lets me know, because I, again, I can tell a lot about you from that. Mm-hmm. And I always say that talent have to be careful of what they're posting on Instagram about themselves. In what way? I don't want to, see, you know, because... If I'm looking at your Instagram, a, p- a potential client is looking at your Instagram. If oh. you're out there par- partying and drinking and you got alcohol in your hands, you got your smoking, yeah. they're not going to, because now with the way social media is, you know, a brand can hire you and then someone goes and looks at your Instagram and they're like, oh, well, this person was saying these anti whatever. And then it comes back to bite you. You can lose that contract, that job or whatever. That's so true. But yeah. So people just have to be careful. And, um, you know, if you have high followings on your personal Instagram, maintain that following, but just start cleaning up your page. If okay. you don't have a huge following, then create a model page. So by cleaning up a page, like obviously like drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Don't be posting stories of you like smoking a blunt at night. Right. Like, don't be super political. Yeah. Don't be, don't, be, don't, don't be talking about that stuff. Yeah. If you're trying to like actually drive the brand. Ex- absolutely. How about all the thought pictures? Like how about like booty pics and stuff like that? I hate it, them. You shouldn't, they yeah. should just delete those. Yeah. But what if that's what got them that following? It always does. Isn't that what it does? Less clothes, more followings. But again, decide what kind of model you want to be. That's true. If that's the following you need to be a model, then go a different lane. You know, but if you want to be really taken seriously in this industry, because there was still that stigma about models. Oh, just being a pretty face and not being that. And that was one thing that burned me up in my career, you know, because I knew I was more than just that. You know, I... I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I'm, I'm educated. And, um, but people still have that perception of you until they speak to you. So always find ways to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and you're presenting the best version of you and real version. I I feel that. I feel that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. If the girl's a total asshole, but she's an amazing model. I'm like, Oh man, I still want to shoot with her. Oh no. It's kind of a weird one, you know? It's like, oh, it's like you're so mean, but Yeah. And that but that will only last but so long. It's true. I've had a model that was that way, would cancel on jobs (sighs) at the last minute. She would not show up. She would call out sick. I mean, it was just always it was never ending. And then I would have photographers want to book her. And um I had it happened twice where the photographer actually called me and said, I really want to work with this model. Has she changed? And Dang. the first time I couldn't lie because she hadn't. I'm also not going to put myself out on the line to say something that isn't true. Because if I said, oh, yeah, she's good now. She's good now. Jeez. And then he books and then it's, it falls down. Then that's my reputation. And so you miss out on jobs that way. It, it, I, I don't understand why models like you're not a diva. Yeah. It, you're not Naomi. You're yeah. not, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not signed to elite here. Exactly. All right. Like, let's it's, be honest. There's no need for that. In this industry, in this business, kindness gets you everywhere so let me ask you this if, if a model aspires to be more than kingsley i mean mm-hmm. i'm sure you get that like there's oh, absolutely. there's a lee and, and they Will should Amina and stuff like they absolutely should you you would like help them with that stuff one hundred one thousand percent that's cool to know yeah it's not it's not about me you know what i mean yeah it's if, if i'm that stepping stone to get you to where you need to be then so be it mm-hmm. you know that's life you know you are maybe there to nurture someone and carry them to the next phase of their life and they will be grateful that you help them get there. I do everything I can to push, to help, to promote. And I, I treat it in a way that, you know, in this industry, I say to models, don't let your career be about paid gigs only. Because when I was coming up, some of my non-paid gigs, 
got you the oh best my work. Oh God, it got me the best work, the most recognition, the yeah. most, and the best contacts, you know? Had I said oh. no to that job because, oh, well, they're not paying me and then I got to do this and I got to do that and I had a pissy attitude, then I would have missed out on so many other doors that that job opened for me. So that, I always, That's truisms right and there. And then once you do that, you can then start demanding, you know, yeah. but not in a demanding way, but say, well, you know what? I would really love to do this. You know, here are my rates. And that client is going to understand because they have seen they your, see your work. track work. Yes. They, they, they've seen your track where they see your portfolio and say, absolutely. wow, okay, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Too many girls, they just jump to, I've done 10 shoots, right. pay me. And you're like, what? Right. What Tell me mean? when you've done that for a few years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come mm-hmm. on. <laughs> no, but you're so right. I, I think that's the yeah. biggest thing that I've learned too is that oh, I get a lot of my gigs just based off my creative gigs. Yeah. I don't show half my commercial gigs or anything like that or my yeah. events and anything like that. I, I yeah. show the work that I'm proud of and I put out there. So yes. people book me off that. Yeah. And I think the same should go with for models. Absolutely. It's like, it's like, no, you have to spend time doing free shit. You do. You do. Like meeting people, getting yeah. in those, the right designers clothes. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, even for me now on, on the business side of things, um, you know, when I go out, it's it's to network, it's to meet new people because those could potentially be clients for my talent mm-hmm. or just anything. Somebody was going to benefit from that connection, which I think it's so important and people undervalue the importance of that. This is a random thought. Do people have to pay to be a part of your thing? No, they do not have to pay to be a part. Like, do they have to pay like a monthly fee to like hell no. be on your roster? Hell no. Or is it just like they have to be like accepted? They, yes. I hate saying it that way because it's like, no, they're not. Oh, yeah, you're not accepted. You can't get in the cool kids club. You can't, right. But no, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, you know, they submit. If we see them through the website, you know, we think they got what it takes. We check out our roster, Mm -hmm. see where we can fit them in. And we reach out to them, set up a meeting. We meet with all of our talent face-to-face. Everyone I've signed has been a face-to-face meeting except for one. That's been really good then, huh? Yeah. And they came from a reputable referral. It's a Mm no-brainer. And um, so that was it. And I mean, because of the distance was so far, I didn't want to make them drive up here just to have the face-to-face meeting. But um, so, yeah, it's we see you. We we think we can work with you. We, We bring you on. And, you know, we take an agency fee from the work we get for you. Well, that's natural. Of that's course. natural. Yeah. Well, and I mean, the only other thing that any any reputable agency will will um, will require is we pay a monthly service of one monthly fee for our services on our website, you know, mm-hmm. to house each model on our website. That is something that comes out of our pocket. That's a monthly debited thing. So we recoup that on an annual basis. So it's one time a year, whatever that rate may be, mm-hmm. you know, it's a very small rate. And, um, and that comes out of their first paycheck. Okay. So when they book, so oh, they can be yeah, on so the, it's not like out of their pockets, it's out of your not first out of paycheck. Pockets, out of your pay- That's so paycheck respectable. Over that, you know, so there are talent that I have on the roster who have not booked mm-hmm. and guess who's paying me. So yeah, I was really wondering about that because there's a local agency that, did, that does that. Yes. And right. like Lord Voldemort, they shall not be named. They should not but be named. I, I thought that seemed very fishy. That's so wrong. And at the same time, I wasn't sure if it was the standard. industry standard. It's not. It's not. It's not. So just so don't do it. Don't do that. Don't do it. It's, that seems fishy. It's it's sh- If an agency asks you to pay them money to mm-hmm. be with them, it's a scam. Ooh. I believe that. It's what a else scam. is it? Yeah. What else is it? Exactly. If you're on like a monthly retainer and you're paying this thing and and, and you're not getting gigs that... And you're not getting gigs. You're not getting gigs that, that make up for that. Yeah. But what if what if they're giving you like modeling lessons and stuff like that? <sighs> is that worth the payment or is no. that something you would do for free for them? Well, I, you know what? There's so, so many sides. Okay. Joy would love to do that for free for talent. Mm-hmm. And that's something that is in the works for this year. Workshops, right? Business joy is trying to understand how that looks in the bigger picture of things because to bring an expert in you know there's a lot of things that I can expertly speak on because I'm versed in it I've done it whatever and I have the experience but um there's some things that you know like if I wanted to put on a makeup workshop I would have to bring some specialist in there you know I would want to give my talent the best of the best and their time needs to be compensated for you know um if there was a venue that we needed to house the amount of people that's a venue fee there you know um, so there are things that make it hard for companies or agencies to do free workshops or lessons like that. However, that is something that I'm working on and trying to find the most cost effective, if not free mm. way to do that, because 
talent like favors or, or trade for services yeah, and stuff, as opposed yeah. to just taxing the models. Yeah, because talent need that guidance. You know, they, they need do. runway workshop. They need how to go to a casting, how to go to a book, how to deal with a booking. I have even when I send my emails to my talent about I need I want to submit them for a certain casting and I send requests. Some of the stuff I get, I'm like, wow, you know. And I've tried to give as much guidance as possible, but there are things that still miss fall through the cracks. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. Little things like that. And again, like I said, makeup workshops um, just to help them be their best because models have to understand this is a business for them too. You know, it's not just about you getting in front of a camera. Everything you really? do should be, should be about how can I benefit? If I am doing free work, is this helping to build my book and my portfolio? Uh, looking at the bigger picture. Look at, look at the bigger picture. Don't just look for today. Not looking for the check. Yeah. But the check will come. The check is the bigger picture. So they should always. So you think they should always be focused on how does this benefit me and my goals and my career as well? Is that everyone should be? Yeah. You as a photographer, you know, you're you want to shoot and you want to do a collaboration because it's something that you may need and benefit and um and so that's everyone should look at it in that manner. You mm. know, unless you're just doing this for fun, yeah. then that's fine. But if you're doing it because you actually want to make money from it or you actually want to succeed and grow as a model and yeah. move to bigger markets, then the sooner you understand that this is a business, it's a job. Uh, just because you're a contractor, you're a 1099 employee. Doesn't mean you should sit on your hands and just exactly. wait for to be summoned. So you're saying they should actually take proactive tips to, absolutely. I don't know, maybe work on posing, maybe yes. to make their own connections, yep. maybe to... Take acting classes if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. There's wealth of that. I give, I have connections with different studios um, that give acting classes and I refer that to my to my talent. So it's Learn your craft because when I was coming up, I took acting classes. I was in theater. So I had all of that experience. Um, I didn't take runway lessons. I just learned on my own. But that was from walking back and forth in my hallway with the mirror at the end of the hallway. Yeah. And I made That's every practice. Yeah, you hallway practice. my runway. Yeah. <laughs> and then posing, I would get in front of the mirror and try to understand my facial angles, you know. Uh, I know so, how your face works best. Yes. So when I get in front of the camera, I understand that. But... I find that a lot of models today don't do their homework. They don't practice. They just think they're going to jump in front of the camera and everything is going to come naturally. Oh, and it dude, doesn't. that is so true. And I it notice doesn't. that stuff too. Yeah. I've gotten to a point now where I, I notice these things. I'm like, if I shot with you last year and I shoot with you again. You haven't grown. And you haven't grown. I'm, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I really right. don't work anymore. Like you're just taking, and then it's, and you don't want to put your heart into that. Yeah. You know, and so for me, the models that I see that are super dedicated with this, that Keep in touch with me. Like, do the things that is a listed in their contract, but um, accept, go above and beyond. Like, and like beyond. if you care yeah. about it, you do extra stuff. Like, Absolutely. if they take the time to build a relationship with you, it's probably in their best interest. Absolutely, you know, it's when they're traveling and they let me know, hey, Joy, I'm going to be out of town these weeks. I'm this is my blackout week. Thank you for not letting me submit you, and then the client books you, and then you're like, oh, I'm out of town. Oh, you know? yeah, that's so true. That's the worst. Or they make changes to their appearance without letting us know in advance. We submit them and the client books them and they're like, show up different. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you gotta be ready to like put in work once maybe they get in door, or even just to get in that door of, yeah. of you or any other agency like that. It's not Absolutely. just, you're pretty, let's get in front of a camera exactly. and sit there. And that's what people don't understand is that modeling is hard. Hard. Like sure. You have to have some sort of uh, genetic things there already, but like, you can't just be good looking. Yeah. I, I've met girls who, you, like you said, don't look like models, but they just turn on. Turn like, it on. Yeah, I, I'm just like, man, you killed it. I was yes. not expecting that. Like, they just have the angles. I don't got to tell them everything. They right. switch between frames. They know their yeah. almost like. They move slowly through each frame. Yeah, it's, it's refreshing. <laughs> like, they know. And then, yeah. then you can tell a girl who just is just pretty in front of a camera. And yep. She's just like. Falls flat. Just like. Completely. Yes. In on hit. Yes. <laughs> like, no. No. It's so true. Yeah, we good. both see that side of the house and it's it's crazy. And I'm like, just do your work, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Funny. it's a skill. Mm-hmm. Modeling is a skill. It's a skill. It's not something you're born with. And it's, it's a modeling. learned skill over the years. And for me to come from, and what it, what cracks me up is people have no idea how much of a tomboy I was, you know? I mean, I still was in the fashion all through my sports life, but I was such a tomboy. Sweatpants, sweatshirt, bandana on my head, and that was it. And to transform that into a fashion career... You know, that I learned that. I learned how to walk gracefully. But how gracefully. did that happen? How did you go from volleyball to fashion? Yeah, I know that's funny. How did that happen? Was someone just like, hey, you want a model? Well, you know, you have people telling you this through, through your life. But 
you don't, I did not believe them because mm. all I saw was a little ugly duckling to a skinny black girl with long arms and long, like nothing fit. And so, um, so you're like runway proportions too. Yeah. So it was perfect for that. And, um, and I did a lot of that and that actually was what boosted my modeling career was my runway work. Oh, then, yeah. And then I started getting more bookings for print work and commercials and things like that. So it was that progression. And, um, but yeah, it just, I don't know how it happened, but people would say that. And so then one year I said, you know what, I'm just going to try, you know, I idolize all the supermodels anyways. And so I found, I found a photographer online. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, back not, then it was a little different story. It was such a different story. Like I would not recommend that today. You know, I mean, it's it, like Instagram is, is our version of the internet back then, you know, but I found one, a, a guy showed up to a studio. Oh my God. And that was it. And it could have been a creeper moment, you know? <laughs> was, was you just like top it, type in like photography on Google and it was just yeah, like... Yeah, I don't even know what I searched back then, you know? It just, I think it was, and I, had, I was new to the area, so I was like Northern Virginia, looking for someone close by in the whole nine. And I saw his website. I saw some fashion stuff on this. I was like, all right. Well, I'll say back then, a lot less people were photographers. Yeah. So you probably had a lot more quality. Like yeah. the odds of getting a quality photographer were a lot higher. Right. You know, exactly. But wait, I take that back. That was the, that was the first time that I did a I sought it out professional. Like, all right, I'm going to give this a real shot. But when I was in high school, one of my mom's friends was a photographer. And so he wanted to shoot me. And so we did the shoot. And one of my friends is holding that picture hostage because I made the mistake oh. of showing them. Oh, man. Is it just like awkward it's or something? It's so awkward. Like I, I see some of my old model, some of my model's friend's old pictures. And I'm like, that was actually a good first modeling picture. Yeah. I got hands on my hip and I'm just like. Oh. <laughs> it was bad. Just so extra. So just extra. Like you thought you were on and like the Vogue cover. It was just like awful. My hair was awful. It just was bad. But I had on a choker, and that's funny because now chokers are back There's in. There's totally back in. Yeah, see, that, that's it. That's my redeeming thing. Don't look at <laughs> yes, home posing yes. or my makeup or anything like that. <laughs> right. No makeup, forehead shining for the gods, you know. But it just, yeah, so that, that was it. And um, so then when the fast forward to the other photographer, then he submitted my my pictures to this agency, who was kind of a scam agency, honestly, because ah. they did a little bit of that same thing. But, you know. When you're young and you don't know, you're just happy. That's... You're just happy to be a part of an agency. It's, right. It's it's like it's like what? yes. No way. What? What? And that's what I tell people now because it's so I I understand why girls get caught in those like scams because the hype. they hype they hype up your, your, your dreams. Yeah, and you think you're gonna be a big old star, and then you're like, oh. So, anyways, that agency they did get me a couple bookings or whatever, that's not bad, and though. yeah. So I did that and then just started hustling, you know, yeah. did a lot of freelance and then started applying to other agencies. And then finally, boom. Wow. So how far did that take you? It took me to having some covers, um, reputable magazine covers. Um, I did a national commercial with Amtrak. Wow. Um, and, and then just like tons of New York fashion week. I walked in the shows a couple, several years in a Ooh, row. That must be cool. Yeah, that was cool. Like landing that. So all those milestones were great when I got my first cover, when I got my first New York fashion week job, um, the first national gig, you know, it's just like all those things are just, ah, but I remember I was in my thirties when my mom finally said to me, I was late thirties too. She's like, so I guess you love this, huh? Because again, she's a, she's a Nigerian woman, you know, and our culture. That long. Yes. But if you're not a doctor, lawyer, this, that, and the other, you're a failure. That's, that's just immigrant mentality. It is so immigrant mentality. And so I had that, you know, so here I am chasing this modeling dreams of being Naomi Campbell. Hey. You know. <laughs> Wanted to be on a billboard in New York. But then as I got older, I was like, ah, oh, I better start adjusting that a little really? bit. Really? Because that was not going to happen. Yeah. I thought I was good, but that was not my reality. And my reality was I started getting more into commercial modeling and that was, I started growing in that and just seeing where I can fit in more, doing fitness stuff. So, you know, through all those experiences, I was able to find my lane, you know, but. It sounds, yeah. wow, you went really far. I mean, Naomi Campbell, I mean, I don't know how that happens. Like that is just like, it's like making it's like being famous in the NBA. It's like, yeah. sure, you're in the NBA, but it's like mm -hmm. you're famous in the NBA. Like, how does, yeah, and I am making was just, it's just rare. Oh, That's just rare. That's a mix of everything coming together and just everything. being in the right situation. In the right place at the right time. You know, yeah. being a part of, she was elite. She yeah. was one of the first supermodels, yep, you know. Just found her. Yeah, like, I, is that what happened? Uh, yeah. She was just found. She was scouted. So 
someone on the street, you know? But you know what's funny? That's now that's that, that those those kinds of stories. Yeah. And it happens, you know. And you know, only the future will tell if 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 Kingsley will grow into some big version of a lead or whatever, just for lack of a better um relation. Um, but t- a couple of my top models I found just like that, you know? Just walking on the street. Just walking. Well, one I found in, in I didn't realize until recently when I told this story that it sounded creepy. I found her in high school. Um, but I was. <laughs> no, it's, it's creepy if a guy says right, that. Exactly. It's, if, if, if I said that, then it's really creepy. Right. You're like, what are you doing there? <laughs> but I was volunteering for her high school um, fashion show, their fashion program. Mm-hmm. And um, a friend of mine had reached out to me whose daughter goes there and was like, hey, I produce their shows. I would love for you to help because I do fashion production, too. So I'm like, all right, sure. So I did that for two years. And that first year I saw this model and I was like, oh my God. And this is when I first started Kingsley. Mm-hmm. So I'm still just like figuring things out and fumbling here and there and trying to be more in control than I really was at the time. But I saw her, gave her my card. You know, we went through the fashion show and then I signed her on. And, um, and now she's one of my um, highest book, top paid models. No way. Who is she? The man, my man. Jinsi Paniagua. <laughs> oh, I don't know who she is. Yeah, I'm surprised. Well, you see her. She's everywhere. But Jinsi, I probably have. Yeah, you've definitely seen her. It's a cool name, too. Yeah. And, um, and then recently I have signed someone new that I, I was with my family in Leesburg. We were at a restaurant. I saw this cute young girl just walking by and I was like, holy crap. So I got up, chased her down and I was like, hey. <laughs> And gave him my card. And it's then, different if you walk up to me, like you're, like you're very stylish, very elegant looking. Like so, it's like it's like it, it's like a surreal movie moment. Like someone is like, "Hey, you should join my agency." Here, right. like like they gotta be like, "Yeah, it, that's funny." It's yeah. different if me as a photographer, I'm like, "Hey, want to model for me sometime?" Right, and I'm like looking like this. And I'm just like they're like, "Uh." But you know what's funny? It makes me more aware of going out and how I look because that particular case, I was not, I was oh. in sweats. We were basketball practice games for my nieces. It was a family day of just you were chilling. Chi- yeah, you were chilling. I had on a hat, you know, a baseball cap looking rough, you know, I don't think I had makeup on. So I was kind of like, she's going to think who is this bum approaching me talking about she has an agency. But luckily what I do now, because I also know these young people, they don't really follow through and so I asked them to pull up their Instagram and I'll have them follow me, then screenshot it or whatever the case may be. I do the same I'm, thing. I, yeah. I have to follow and then screenshot yes. because otherwise you just get lost in the sauce. I, get I, I can't check who I recently followed. Exactly. So I have to, you have to do that. Do that. Yep. And so I did that and I, um, I had Curtis follow up with her. And, um, and so, yeah, then I set up a meeting, her and her mom, she was in high school. So she's my newest one. I won't say her name yet, but um, yeah, yeah, leave that one. Yeah, <laughs> is there exactly. so why don't you want to say her name? Is it is it like you don't want other people to know who she is and no, go find her? No, I don't her? even know why. It's so stupid, uh, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it's like it's, it's yeah. like your secret. It's like your secret <laughs> weapon. Know, it's like your so secret. <laughs> and I, you know, it's so funny. I I always get scared of that thought too. Like when I'm welcoming new talent to the on, on a post. And I'm like, oh, no, everyone's going to know them. And someone may steal them. But Here comes all the photographers trying to collab, trying to collab. Yes. Like, like seagulls. Trying to collab, Sneaking trying to collab, behind. Trying to collab. And I'm like, you know they're my talent. <laughs> oh, have you gotten poached before? Like yeah. Like model poached? Yes. From like, does, yeah. it, does it happen from bigger agencies? Is that what happens? Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can we talk about that at all? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of figured. Yeah. But I'm guessing like a big agency came in and... Tried. They oh tried. Is it because they signed a contract with you or something? No, no, no. They just tried to come in behind and take my and 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 woo my talent over. Oh, right? my talent are very loyal. Thank you, talent. I love uh, you for that. But they don't. They, but you don't make them sign a contract where they're like. No, they sign a contract. Okay. My yeah. talent have not non-exclusive contracts. I have one exclusive talent on my board. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So so that way they could just at any point be like working with other people. They can, and outside of Washington D.C., a can- mm-hmm. contracts are. You can sign work with freelance with any part body outside of Washington, D.C. So I don't I, I not that I don't care what you do. I want you to do better. And I always tell them when you're going to work with other people, if you think Kingsley is is good, is is a strong brand for you, then make sure you're rising above that. You know, mm-hmm. don't go work with people that are less than that, you That's know, true. because that lessens your brand Very as true. a person. So reach for the stars you know i'm yeah. always happy with if you go, go backwards up, i'm kind of like, like oh why'd you do that you yeah, know then it makes you look bad yeah. and it's like oh you're associated with them it's like oh. <laughs> but if you're gonna grow i mean 
I'm happy. I'm happy to have had you. I think. You know I, I mean? think also for sake of clarity, someone who's listening to this and they might and they think like, oh, you make them sign contracts. It's necessary. It's absolutely necessary. It's necessary that they sign these like exclusivity contracts up to whatever degree. Yeah. You know because it um, protects them and me. Yeah. And it pretty much irons out what is expected of you and what's not expected of you. You know, and um and and I just feel like it's and and it's at will. Either party, you can terminate in writing at any point. So yeah. it's not like you're signing your life away if you sign a non-exclusive contract. And that's what people get confused. And I'm always adamant yeah, with that. Contracts my always seem so, oh, signing yeah. my life away. But then I'm like, oh, read it. Yeah. Understand what the hell you're signing because that's how models get caught in these scams because they don't read the contract. You can't get caught in a scam if you understand what you're reading. Uh, and especially what you're if you're signing. lost in the, I'm signed to an agency. Yeah. I, all of a sudden you're and just, that, <laughs> yep. Signing away. I'm like, please ask me questions. Um, and so there's a bunch of initial sections in there just so they can see what, what in layman's terms. And then, you know, there's no hidden agenda in our contracts. And I try to be very, um, straightforward about that, you know, and I'm just, I'm straightforward about everything with my talent, you know, just because you sign with me does not guarantee that I can get you work. I'm not the deciding factor about that. If my goal is, I wish I could. And when I knew talent gets work, I am so happy. I mean, (sighs) God. Yeah, you know, it's it's just I'm I'm happy when anyone gets work. Like, and that's the funny part about this business for me was I thought I would miss being in front of the camera. Oh yeah, like like I some really sort of like jealousy in a yeah. weird way. Yeah, but I don't. Wow, I don't at all. And it's almost as if, as if when they're in front of the camera, I'm there. That's cool. I'm part of that. That's you super know? cool. And so I trust me because I always joke like every model has a little bit of um vanity in them or you of know course. right you're, you're because, signed up to be a model yeah you want people to look at you yeah you know and then let's be real i don't think that's a bad thing I you know? know i don't think it's a bad thing and people make it seem like it's so bad so understand that and embrace it but um yeah i, I just I, i'm surprised that i felt the way that i feel you think I'm, you'd be there kind of being like oh man i really kind of get that itch yeah. you know like oh, an yeah. old fighter like, oh, oh absolutely because like when i play volleyball now i mean i can't like if i see a game going on i got the itch but i'm like girl sit down your knees are bad uh, you can't <laughs> jump anymore <laughs> like just don't embarrass yourself <laughs> that's just competitive nature oh, it you, is you know it's so I, my it, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, what were you saying? we went to my niece's volleyball games and we were there my husband went with me and we, as soon as we walk in the gym, I'm seeing all the balls being bumped and set. The sound I'm of the like, feet. Oh, my God. And so I'm like sitting here geeking out, you know. So we're on the bench wa- uh, watching the game. And this one girl on the other team was serving underhand. And she kept scoring. And I'm yelling, you're going to let that girl score with an underhand? <laughs> <laughs> and my husband's like, you do know people can hear you, right? But that's so true. How do you let someone <laughs> hear the floater like yeah. that? Like I was all rough with them, you know, like, come on, get that ball. Uh, it's really bad. You're just going to come out of nowhere yes. and just like spike it in their face. <laughs> yes. like, you let that shit get through. Yes, that's me all the way. All the way. Then afterwards, I'm giving them pointers. Like, all right, that's what you had to do. <laughs> that's cool, though. Yeah, that's just so. like the competitive edge. It is. It's like when I see a photography that's like, great photo, but you didn't retouch your skin even <laughs> a little bit. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? You, you edited it. Yeah. But you left the pimples and unsmooth skin. It's oh, like, I hate that. Like, it's like, I'm like, how are you against skin retouching? Like, mm-hmm. I, I understand there's too much. Yeah. But a little bit goes a long way. It goes way. a long way. You gotta it, just even it out. Kind of just like a little bit of makeup. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like, a, you're, not, you're not gonna have a model. It's like, oh, I just, I'm all natural. It's like, no, 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 honey. no, no. no, no. We're gonna put a little bit on you because it goes a long it way. It goes a long just way. Just the reality of it all. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to wear you, but you gotta wear some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like we're kind of getting to natural clothes here. Yeah. Um, then the fact that my stomach is rumbling, I'm so hungry. Um, I do like mini fast in the morning. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Not by purpose. I just, I'm not you sleep hungry. Through it. No. Yeah, I sleep through it all, right? <laughs> oh, I've been telling myself to do that. Like, I've heard some people say they'll fast for like one day. Yeah, like fasting so in right now. Yeah. It's the end thing to do. Yeah, I'm fasting. It burns fat. Everybody's doing it. It burns fat. Just, <laughs> and the quads and ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I offered my guest yesterday a sip of my La Croix. He was mm. like, I never had it. And so I just opened it. It was cold. Oh, I was okay. like, do you want to taste it? And uh-huh. he was like, no. I think it was just like a, like, you know, a man thing. He's like, I don't want to drink your La Croix. <laughs> La Croix. Love that stuff. No, it was funny. That had been really cool. Yeah. Did, though. What a little <laughs> live reaction. But um, one small question and one big mm-hmm. question before we go. Um, mm-hmm. Photographers that want to work with agencies, what's your advice to approach in that whole thing? Because I know for a fact that when I was uh, 
feeling comfortable, had like a decent portfolio, working with agencies was like a big deal to me. Like mm -hmm. I was like, how do I even approach this? Yeah. What's your Why do you guys want to work with agencies? I it's mean, validation. Yeah. Okay. It's validation. That's it's 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 if you don't it's when you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, you you want to shoot with agency models, mm -hmm. which I think I still want to do is I want to mm -hmm. work with good talent. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of at the level personally where if 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 I'm not just because you're pretty, like you have to have something there or yeah. it would be agency signed for me. Right. But I think for photographers working with the agency, it's like this validation of I worked with an agency. Mm -hmm. And do you guys classify working with an agency in the way of, because you guys work with our agency models, you know, whether you yeah. work them through us, because I know a lot of photographers. Are you are, upset about that when they don't go through you? Take, no, go I'm the not. It's, you know, it's, I can't control that. Yeah. You know, the control freak in me would love that. Love to know. But yeah, just to know. Yeah. Because I like to know what's coming down the pipe for my talent too, you know? And then, and also if I can have a relationship with the photographer to, Hey, can we get the images afterwards? Because we mm. love to update their online portfolios and, and just have more information, you know, more images for them. I think sometimes it, 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 you feel like if you go through the agency first, it's like you might have to pay or something, even though it's a free shoot, like, yeah. like it's going to be like a more sort of more like work. ordeal, more mm -hmm. work as opposed to just DMing the model and just being like, Hey, you want to work? Yeah. Either. It's really not, at least not for, for me, you know, and I'm not, I, I may not do everything the traditional way, but to me, it's all about relationship building, you mm -hmm. know, because. Just smarter than just going to the model, I guess. Yeah. Right? And, um, and then just having a more organized flow. So I like photographers to reach out to us and express their interest in wanting to, like I was replying to two photographers today, one in Philadelphia, one local that wants to test with our agency. Mm -hmm. So it's just about reaching out and expressing what you want and to call, do. And call it a test shoot. Yeah, call it a test shoot. And also note if when you say test, some photographers test, but they it's a paid test. Or is it going to be what do you mean, a, paid test? some photographers want to test with your agencies, but they want the models to pay for the test shoot. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Yeah, instead what, of it just being a trade all the way around. They know? want, what about... Yeah, because I know I know I've heard a lot of photographers say like they'll shoot they'll test shoot, but they've gotten paid for those tests. Mm -hmm. Is that not a thing anymore? Are people getting paid it for is, testing? No, yeah, they can absolutely. Yeah. But is that only if you approach them, or how does that work? Well, there's two. It it works this way with us. Um, we have photographers that work directly with Kingsley, mm -hmm. and they have worked out special rates for the talent. Of course. So when we have new talent that come on board that needs to start their portfolio. We we give our talent all of those options. Here they are. Uh, Here's okay. the rates for okay. each one, their website. So the talent can pick who they feel like they feel comfortable with. And then we go ahead and organize the dates and everything in the looped um, chain of communication. Or, um, and that's a paid scenario. And then there's other scenarios where it's a, a free test. You know, we need this portfolio. And maybe the talent doesn't have the funds to do that because it is hard. You know yeah. what I mean? I understand that challenge of like, I know I need a portfolio, but I can't afford to have it because I'm a struggling artist, you know? So um, we have photographers and any of those other ones that pay, like I can, we have a relationship where I can say, hey, I need a favor. I need some shots for this model to get yeah. the website up and running. And, and, but, you know, and they do that. So again, going back to relationships. It's um, better to go to just hit up the agency first, even if you know who they're signed to and just kind of yeah. build that relationship as opposed to just yep. make sense. Yeah. And because, you know, and I, I just feel like when you're transparent about things, it just, it goes a, a long way in the relationship dynamics because then I can refer you out for stuff as a photographer. So what if, you know? what if the photographer wants to shoot for your agency? Um, we are definitely open to that, mm. but I, I, I don't have any exclusivity on that because there are several photographers that work with, and that is one of the biggest things we're pushing for this year is, um, is although we represent photographers, we haven't represented them officially as signed photographers. Yeah. That's the thing I yeah. recently found out about is like, there's photographers who are signed yeah. to people, which Absolutely. I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. And it, and it helps again. That's to me, that's one more avenue of being able to get business, you know, and then yeah, and especially in your case, it's like you can book the talent and book the photographer exactly. and do all the whole exactly. thing. So, and I've had photographers that have won in those cases where, you know, I've been able to send them onto a, a job. And, and that's why they build that relationship yep. with you from working. Yep. And then I know I can count on them. And so that re reciprocity uh, is, is important because then if I need a, a, a favor, it, it can come through. If they need a favor, sometimes they're like, Joy, I need you. I mean, one of that, those photographers recently referred a client to me. He was shooting a lookbook. He's like, no, go to Kingsley for the models. 
Nice. Got, you you know, so your, it's, it's the friends do. You yeah. scratch each other's backs. Absolutely. And then, you know, and he was grateful and sent a thank you note. He's like, thank you so much. Your models made me look even better. The client already loved him, but then it was just like, bam. And then you referred me to an agency that mm, gave me exactly Works out for everyone. Yeah. It's a win-win. That's so, that's so super I think cool. it's important. Yeah. See, and photographers, I got your back. Yes, all right. I, 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 this is a photography centered podcast. Yes. Sometime. <laughs> so yeah, send, send emails, you know, um, info at kingsleymanagement.com. Always have a way to, for us to view your work, whether it's Instagram or if you have a website, we love hearing that. Um, and just, you know, be patient while we review and get back to them, but we're certainly open and we sign new talent all the time. So especially for talents who, I mean, photographers who just want to test. Yeah. We, we have people ready to go. Yeah. I think we touched <laughs> the whole thing about if, if talent is interested in, in working with you, mm -hmm. just apply. Mm hmm they can apply on our website at kingsleymanagement.com. We have a submission page where they can upload their okay. images, the resume, all their stats. And they and can do all that. that with just like a cell phone. Yep. Like, yeah, it doesn't have to be some crazy thing, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, and then if we don't hear back from you, you know, it's not, we cannot respond to everyone. You know, in the mm -hmm. beginning I started to and was like, oh, so sorry or, you know, but. You just can't. It, we can't, you know. So unfortunately, if you don't hear back, then. It may not have been a good fit, you know. Yeah. Don't give up on the dreams. Keep trying and, and grow yourself and your portfolio. But, um, yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. Cool. Was well, there anything else you want, want to add or anything oh, I missed or anything that you're burning? No, that, that you like, did. Did I miss anything? No, you had some really good questions that led to other questions. So um, I really just want to add, you know, thanks for the support. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone out there, for the support of Kingsley and, and our amazing talent and the people we work with. It's been an amazing year, and I'm looking forward to 2019. 2019 will be epic. I uh, know, right? 2019 will be epic. Yeah, go Kingsley. I kind of want 2020 to get here faster because it just sounds better, but 2019 yeah. is epic. <laughs> We're going to be in the 20s. I know. It's kind of weird. Oh, We're the new so 20s. Weird. Oh. 20 is a new 20. Right. Again. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, that's it. That's the angle. Bye. Peace out.